hi everyone. Good morning. Um, today, Alan will be sharing his his screen for us with the presentation. But today, the idea is to talk about uh, a little bit of how social responsibility can be included in the product development process and also uh, in the in design. Um, Alan and I uh, have been working together in the same client since uh, February. And this is a topic that really uh, raises the interest in us. So it was a very good opportunity to be here and talk about something that we like to all of you. So thank you for the opportunity. Uh, we're gonna talk, we're, the presentation is mainly split in three different uh, areas. So first, uh, a brief introduction on social responsibility, then specifically how it can be uh, related to product development, and finally, uh, how it relates to the design process. We're going to leave some time for questions in the end. And before we start, just a bit of introduction on who we are. Um, nice to meet you. I'm Carolina. I've been working as I've been an Avenue coder since January, um, and in product uh, for around 13 years. 13 years, years, <laughs> sorry. Um, I'm really passionate about the intersection of people and between people and technology and how things can be done in a simpler way. And also the fact that simple has different meanings for different people. And that's the, the beauty of it as we uh, are in a, in a field that gives us the opportunity to interact with people from different cultures, which is also something that um, I'm really passionate about. Um, and now I pass it over to Alain to introduce himself. Uh, so I'm Alain. Um, I've been in, I've been here at Avenue Code since February. Uh, I'm a graphic designer uh, by graduation, but I've been a UX designer for uh, four years, I guess. Uh, it's a little bit less than Carolina has been in the uh, field. But uh, when I said a graphic designer, graphic design, I always uh, love the human science involved in it. So I've, I love uh, anthropology and sociology and how studying cultures and studying people could enhance the experience uh, that we as designers can propose for our users. So uh, this uh, social consciousness, social responsibility is uh, an area that uh, makes me excited to talk about. Uh, so for starters, I, I'm going to talk a little bit about social consciousness. Uh, and we have different ways to say uh, that we, we can say social conscience and we can say social consciousness and we can say social responsibility. They are all linked. Uh, let's try just to understand why social consciousness here. So we have the expression social conscious, which according to Oxford Learner's Dictionary means the state of being aware of the problems that affect a lot of people in society such as being poor or having no home and wanting to do something to help these people. Uh, social consciousness does not have a meaning defined uh, on Oxford Dictionary, but according to Schlitz, Beaton, and Miller, and I will have all the references that I'm uh, talking about here on a link in the end of this uh, presentation that we're gonna share with you guys. But uh, they wrote an article called Worldview Transformation and the Development of Social Consciousness. And they said that the term is used to denote conscious awareness of being part of an interrelated community of others. So it's about our possibility to be aware that we as people are part of a larger whole, uh, being influenced and influencing others and affecting and being affected by others' actions. So we understand that one does complement the other. So it is important to uh, be aware of the problems that affect other people in our society, as well as being affected, as being aware uh, that we are part of that society and may be part of that, that problem also. And if we are part of the problem, why don't we try to take part of on the solution uh, for them too? 
So let me just tell you some data related to our field. We have over 6.3 billion smart people, smartphone users uh, around the globe. We have 1.14 billion tablet users. Uh, according to the World Food Program, as many as eight, oh, I hate saying numbers, I'm sorry, uh, 828 million people go to bed hungry every night. According to the World uh, Health Organization, at least 2.2 billion people have a near or distance vision impairment. Uh, accor also, according to who, uh, approximately 1.71 billion people have musculoskeletal conditions worldwide. According to a research, research made by UNEST, 2.2% uh, well, 2 of Brazil's population is transgender, transgender or non-binary, which makes uh, 3 million people. According to Pew Research, 1.6% of the population is trans or non-binary in the US. Uh, so these are all just like small data that we have about uh, some groups of people uh, and we are not including everyone here because the list would be much longer than this uh, and it would take us more than one hour to talk about all of them. But this presentation is gonna serve more as a point of reflection for all of us of how we can make to, uh, what we can do to help uh, different people who have different needs. So we are all working in different projects here. We do help our clients succeed, but how can we have ideas of how to do something to address those people who might need to be at least acknowledged? I brought here something that uh, I think most of us know. Uh, I these are the 17 goals of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, I know they are like a huge picture of what the world and the countries need to think about, but they can also work for us as reminders of what we should be working on as a society to try and bring peace and prosperity for people on the planet now and into the future. Uh, with those goals in mind, we ha might have some feel for insights, right? I know it might be a lot to think about and we cannot be individually responsible for each of these goals. So we will try to bring all of what I said to something closer to us and to how we can help. Be it as PMO, be it as designers, uh, we might start thinking about solving problems while being socially conscious and bringing that to a socially responsible product development. Um, thanks a lot. So keeping in mind all those all those numbers and how those people also consume, um, it's important to remember that there is a, a, an interesting quote that I want to share. And you can please uh, pass, pass it on, Alan. Uh, that businesses cannot succeed in societies that fail so all of those people they are somehow con they are consuming even though even regardless of their conditions they are consuming and we are the people behind uh what is being delivered for for them uh to be consuming and as the the technology evolves uh, our behaviors have changed you can please pass it on, Alan. Our behaviors have changed uh, throughout the history with all uh, with several products that changed the way that we we do things from the smartphones, the internet that completely changed the way we we relate to people and how it decreased the bureaucracy of several services like banking, uh, mobility and hospitality, for example, taking Uber and Airbnb as, as famous examples. Uh, these these solutions, they came to solve problems, real problems that we had as, as a society, whether it was to uh, about the time it take for us to take a cab in the past or to make uh, mobility, to turn mobility into something more accessible or even to provide more affordable uh, options when we go out on vacation and even make some money um, renting our, our houses. But then uh, the discussion is that 
even though these solutions they brought uh, some facilities for us but they also improved they also brought different discussions to the table and we could be here spending a long time debating about the problems that they ended up generating but the key message is more related to the that the current product development trinity the whole desirable feasible and viable becomes more fragile when it doesn't consider the social responsibility and the impact it will have on people as well. And as product people, we know that uh, a product will start with an idea and that it should be solving a real problem because in the end it's about uh, maximizing the long-term uh, value. And it's really critical then to integrate the social responsibility here if we are talking about uh, long-term value and um, ultimately this uh, the, the, the product development framework that we're going to follow uh, would allow us to avoid the shortcomings that the short-term thinking would bring and in integrating it into, into our process, integrating the social responsibility will help us uh, gathering all the benefits of designing, really having the future in mind. And um, as product uh, owners, when we, we take a look at one of our responsibilities, at least we know that the, the that maximizing value is really one of the most important uh, responsibilities that we have and when we take a look at the agile frameworks or the the any other um, product uh, development foundations that modern frameworks provide uh, you can pass it on please Alan. they all kind of fail in integrating the the social responsibility the social conscious as part of their guiding principle so it's really uh on us to integrate this into the core product development processes, metrics, uh, so that we have more uh, ethical and, and sustainable products in the future. And here I wanted to share some examples of people who are doing it, regardless of their their fields of, of their industry. So one of them is Patagonia, who is a, a, a very, like, it's a famous company that is uh, doing um that is really focusing on the environmental question and they have uh, programs that encourage their customers to give back what they used their used clothing uh for the business to be able to repurpose it and put it uh without throwing it away and generating more garbage um and also this mission here that they advertised some years ago in some uh, big cities like build the best product and cause no unnecessary harm this is really interesting as well another example is um is overstory so they are basically a tech uh company that is supporting uh the identification of um wildfires uh through machine learning and artificial intelligence so it's really interesting how also their solution is supporting uh the climate changes and the impacts that it is it's generating another example is uh survey which is a, a very traditional and old uh, i i'd say company that uh ended up incorporating in the, their CSR strategy the three pillars of climate, resources, and better life. And they decided to develop a platform, a tool that will help them assess the environmental impact of their, their products and uh, how this and this application can support the top level management and uh, other decision makers in their uh, process with data that will help them, will enable them to be more, more conscious. And finally, uh, there is Loop, which is uh, a car insurance company, which has a different way of assessing uh, the risk factors of their clients, because this is basically talking, they're basically in the, the US market for now. But then uh, what they are bringing here is the fact that black people in black communities pay 70% more for car insurance than those in predominantly white upper middle class neighborhoods. So 
when they are doing their anal analysis process, they try, they put in place um, rules that will allow a more equitable and affordable uh, car insurance for people of color, considering only the driving factors, uh, the, the driving history, and not uh, uh, any any other factors here. And how, but then based on that, how, where can we start from? And here the goal isn't to provide a roadmap or to be the person uh, that is bringing the, the, the rules, it's far from that. The idea here is to bring some insights for us to start this conversation, to begin this journey uh, at some point toward a more socially uh, responsible product development process. So a few of the ideas here, a few suggestions to adopt as product people is to first, uh, as we are in, in clients and sometimes big companies, they have, CSR departments that are putting in place a lot of uh, different actions. So a first start would be getting in touch with those people and try to understand what they already uh, do and try to incorporate that as well and even get their advice on other things that could be done. Second, uh, to really set the bar high uh, when it comes to involving uh, people in the teams in the process development, in the product development process, uh if you are a man uh take a look at the group if you have a woman there as uh white people take a look if we have people of color there because those uh when we have diverse a diverse group the results will probably be more uh impactful and target a, a larger audience uh so for the business that will bring a, a better result as well uh conduct Remortance to identify problems early on is also very helpful because then we are thinking long term. Um, we are understanding already the, the points where we could have issues in the future. So we're being uh, not only socially social responsible, but responsible as a whole. Uh, start off with a focus of eliminating waste is also a way for us for us to start. It's good for the planet. It's good for the the profits and for everybody's time. Um, and finally, identify uh, the biggest opportunities where the impact, the value will be generated and uh, where we can leverage those so that we have more impactful results. Um, we know that it's not easy. The, the road is really going to be bumpy, but uh, it and it will take a lot of time. It will take lots of thinking, hard work, evangelizing, all of that. Just like we know that incorporating agile frameworks is not easy as well, especially when we go into companies with very traditional um, working, working methods, working practices. Uh, and it's not going to be uh, ready for a few years at least as well. Uh, it will require a lot of work, but at least we need to, to start somewhere. And uh, one of the, the starting points is really can can really be about the, the diversity, the inclusion, the inclusion and how all of those walk together so that we can deliver more value continuously. We can have more. Uh, we can have awesome people doing um, awesome stuff. Um, now I invite Alan to talk about the design, how it can be incorporated in, in the design as well. Thank you. You are on mute. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm going to start saying that uh, some people still believe that time consists in creating a step. Oh my God, a step, a step. Oh my God, aesthetically pleasant products. And that is a persisting thought of society. Uh, but we can look back at Bauhaus School and learn that back in the 20s, they, they were already uh, viewing design through a different lens. They saw that design should combine aesthetics uh, with everyday function. Today, as designers, we are challenged to redefine design itself, assume new roles, and commit ourselves to developing solutions leading to a sustainable fu future. 
but socially responsible design goes back some decades as we can see for example from uh the 60s and 70s uh the activist prof professor victor papanek in, the, in his book design for the real world uh, argued that much recent design has satisfied only evanescent wants and desires, while the genuine needs of men have oft often been neglected by the designer. So he advocated that we can go beyond appearance design, styling, or design cosmetics and use our talents to solve the pressing needs of the disadvantaged minorities in society, the disabled, the elderly, the communities in the developing world, uh, people surviving under uh, marginal conditions and others often ignored by the design profession. And he led by example. So he worked with the United Nations and Volvo to design a taxi for disabled people, develop an educational TV set for Africa and prototype a nine cents barrel-less transistor radio from tin cans then can be produced and used in developing countries. So he believed that the only important thing about design is how it relates to people. And when we come to the 80s and 90s, uh, we got these new terms to embody the responsibility in the design industry. So we have we had eco design and green design. Here, the designers and manufacturers started communicating that we were showing concern about the life cycle impacts of design objects on the planet. Uh, the approaches were of technical nature, like reducing materials or energy, uh, like weighting, avoiding toxics during production or usage, and recyclability. With that, consumer demand for green and greener products went up, make, marking a distinctive societal change. Uh, and Nigel Whiteley reiter, reiterated Papanek's message about responding to needs and not merely wants in his 1993 Design for Society, he encouraged designers to ensure that all, designer, all design benef benefits the community at large and that they look into social, environmental, economic, and political issues. So coming to the present, uh, we're going to start with this word right, right here. I think you've all uh, heard about it, empathy. How do you guys currently feel about it? Uh, and you can share on the comments, on the chat, how do you feel about that word? I'm just going to take a sip of water if you want to share. So. Okay, so for some time now, that has been a word that's overused, and it feels like it's mean it's meaning diluted, not for UX designers anyway. Yeah, thanks, Hannah. Yeah, I I, I had a talk about empathy with Hannah before. Uh, okay, so. Empathy requires our, I mean, it requires our some degree of empathy with users. So we, we understand exactly how we can solve their problems. Good work in UX interrogates uh, users' cultures and situatedness in order to make good designs and discover previously unknown patterns. UX and especially application development can overlap with social justice projects in interesting ways. So creating connections that support the lived experiences of undeserved populations has immediate impacts. And even if those impacts are small, lives are made better and resources are differently distributed. Also, undeserved populations find their needs not met in digital and offline contexts frequently because profit move motives uh, are not in place. Social justice focus uh, UX work can address that market gap because success models should not be focused only on product revenue generation. Uh, UX work is research work with users and communities making the stakes of such work intrinsic. Interactions with communities of users have the capacity to ground users as real users facing challenges 
thus elevating the level of importance of such, such work. And how can UX skills create social impact? So UX design is not about creating just beautiful apps, nor is it about checking usability checklists. On this profession, we have to advocate for user populations in a team, but we may also advocate for consideration of experience more generally. People are all diverse uh, in manners and ways, not only because we have different cultural backgrounds, uh, but even within the same culture, we are different. So even if two people share the same experience, the way they see, relate, and describe it could differ. So let's take just a uh, button, for example. Uh, someone would dislike the color and relate that to, this, to the designer. <clears throat> someone would like the color, but the contrast might make it difficult to use. There's layers of sub subjectivity behind every answer we get from users. That's why we need to take time to understand the user's experience. It would take service, interviews, usability tests, media analysis, and a bit of intuition as well. And what about games? I don't know if we have gamers here. I'm not a gamer myself, and I didn't play this game. I've watch it, my husband play it, uh, and it, it's an awesome game. I don't know if you agree with me. Uh, but The Last of Us Part Two won seven of the 11 nominations for the Game Awards in 2020, and one of them was innovation in accessibility. Over the internet, we can see, we can see videos of people's reactions to the accessibility presets that allow them to play. That's, that's, uh, the developers thought of vision, hearing, and motor presets to make the game available to as many people as possible. The game also has a full control customization because holding or rapidly tapping buttons can be challenging for some players. I will not bring all the possibilities of customization and inclusiveness that were designed with the game because it will take us some time, but you can check it out if you feel curious about it. And as I saw researching for this topic, if more people are able to play the game, more people are able to buy the game. Uh, and we have a, a diverse world here. Uh, I'll start saying that it is very important to have a diverse, a diverse team, as Carolina uh, said before. That might make it easier to understand the user's experience with the product. That being said, it's not always that we are able to work with people who might help us understand uh, better what the user population might feel, hence the empathy. A single example here. So having a, the need to ask the user to specify the, their gender in an app, what is the best way to do it? Carolina and I have faced that in the project that we are working together. So using a survey, we discovered that the users who answered it were cis women and men uh, only, but we have a user base in which we know that there is a less uh, one trans man. We also have a bigger user, ba user base that we do not know, and we might keep the option options available for people to identify correctly. So what did we do? Uh, researching about gender identity and the best way to ask about it in forms, we found the organization Reimagine Gender that has a whole page about it, and we applied it to our project. There should be constant revision on, on that of that forms use, and that's how I believe Agile can help us mold our product to the user's needs. Change is constant in the world today, so it should be in our products as well. And small things can be done to make our products more inclusive, not only thinking about gender, but accessibility for different kinds of needs. And uh, we need to think it while we design the product. Thinking about social consciousness while developing a product is not going against capitalism. It is about making the product available for as many people as possible embracing as many as many people as possible and we need to think it why we designed the product uh so i thought this would take longer i think we we spoke very 
uh, fast. I don't yeah. mean. <laughs> we were so concerned about time that we ended up speeding things up. And yeah. <laughs> uh, we do have a link that I'm gonna. I'm just gonna copy it and share it with you on the chat. I'm also gonna uh, share this link on the uh, on the post that we have on AC Hub for uh, further uh, discussions there. But yeah, right now, if you guys have any questions and if we want to discuss it a little bit more here, it's the time. Sure. First of all, congratulations, Carol and Ella. It's a great material that you already shared with us. Uh, uh, I believe the the great uh, success of a project or or a product uh, it's when you achieve a social impact with this program. So, so I agree with you guys with the material. Uh, so there's somebody had an in question to like to share with us or some comments or. Actually, I have a, uh, it's not a question, it's, uh, it's information that I'd like to know if you have a, a, a one example of, a, I don't know, your own personal project or project that you are a developer or uh, work with that uh, brings some social impact. Do you have, I don't know, do you have any kind of example that you'd like to share with us? If you have one. <laughs> Alan, you want to go? Yeah, so uh, I mean, I'm not going to share the prototype here because it's a little mm -hmm. bit of a mess. But uh, in this project in particular that we shared about the gender, uh, I seen about the gender in the form, uh, something that we also have been focusing is accessibility. Uh, we work very closely to the to uh, the front end, front end developer. Uh, who is very, has a lot of knowledge about accessibility. And uh, for this product in particular, we are uh, focusing a lot about how we can make it really accessible for uh, people who are, who have uh, different needs, could be uh, elder people who are not as tech savvy as we think our users most mostly are. Uh, and also uh, trying to include uh, very diverse people because the company that we work for really believes in uh, that diversity and inclusivity for the products. Uh, so yeah, I think because uh, I think that we all know that not all the companies, not all our clients are really uh, interested in uh, making a product uh, that's social impactful as we might want to develop. So we just try to make like some ants work and do a little bit at a time uh, to try and make it uh, as impactful as we can uh, and positively, positively. Oh my God. Positively impactful. Yeah, I, I have another example from a past experience, which was actually uh, the it was uh, I worked for a, an out at a, a project that was targeting automations and in hospitals. And the main issue was that people were not attending the exams. This was for a public um, hospital in Heliopolis in, in Sao Paulo. And people were not attending the exams because the the moment where they scheduled to the appointment date, it had such a long, long period that they forgot. So the goal was to try to put something in place for for people to for people actually to remember that they had an appointment, an exam, so that they didn't lose it and then had to wait another year to take um, an X-ray. 
for example, as a simple example. So the solution started uh, targeting a digital way of having people to be reminded, but then most people didn't have access to the internet. So it was really challenging to think of solutions um, for people having different options, whether it was through WhatsApp, which was the most used uh, tool, uh to be for them to be reminded or even on the phone for people who were older because then there is the other issue with the call centers calling and people not taking phone calls so it was a, a real challenging project but in the end the the final result was that the um the number of um the attendance rate was uh able to increase by 80 percent and uh we had people from the, the the place living close to the hospital and even people that worked there supporting in the in the project as as speakers as well it was not only the the team of people living in a middle class neighborhood in the center of the city nice nice yeah i, I totally agree and i believe that uh bring the technology for these people it's also the uh a new social impact that you have to work with on this problem and try to bring some solutions for this public, right? Mm -hmm. Chris, like share with us? Yeah, actually, I, I have like, not really a question maybe, but <laughs> just uh, to understand like, when when is the best uh, moment to, to raise this? Uh, maybe, I don't know, when you are building the personas or uh, is there any specific technique to discover this this kind of uh, social impact or uh, some kind of maybe uh, people we have to worry about yeah, may may think or have different needs? Uh, okay, Go I'm gonna start. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I believe that, uh, of course, every client will have different needs and we will have to focus on different ways to include uh, people in different kinds of projects that we work in. Uh, I believe that right in the beginning we have UX research and I love having a, a PM appeal uh, someone from business be involved in this so that's why i love working with carolina because we are always aligned uh on how we can uh how we can work together to uh cover the business needs and also the users needs because as ux designers i think that we are here a lot to uh represent those users uh and working with the PM and the PO and uh, I mean, working with PMO, I think that uh, we can achieve that together from the beginning of the, the process. Uh, when we build the personas and uh, I think that as a team, we should build it, build them together. Uh, that's where I believe that we identify those users needs and how we can focus because the persona is mostly to build empathy for the team to work uh, towards uh, those users needs. Mm -hmm. So uh, having a good persona uh, is a good start for this. Yeah, and the persona creation is also a moment where we can challenge um, not only as UX or PMPO, but uh, as the whole group who is preparing that because we tend to work on personas that are similar to us so this is why it's important also to bring people that have uh, diverse people into the team because um, otherwise we are always going to get in the end uh, cis white men cis white woman there in the in the persona chart yeah, and just to remind that a persona is not static, so it's always evolving and it's alive. So it's gonna be uh, changing all the time. That's why we have to be doing research all the time. So yeah.